Hi, my name is Karen Vonnecker, and I would like to show you some of the ways you can work with Corel Painter in terms of color. Color is one of our most powerful tools. Painter can help you work with colors in ways that you are most accustomed to. So let's begin with what we call color harmonies. Harmonies are important to traditional media painters getting started in Painter and illustrators who depend on color harmonies. Corel Painter lets you create a color harmony, a set of colors that work together basically aesthetically. The resulting color scheme contains a set of colors that are created based on your chosen mode, and its base color is the main color in the color panel. So let's take a look now at the color harmonies panel and try to understand how it works and how we can use it in our painting. One of the things you'll want to do is open up the options flyout and choose those harmonies that you feel you'll be using most of the time. Analogous, complementary, tetradic, harmony, monochromatic light, harmony, and monochromatic dark. And you'll notice that I have the analogous, complementary, and monochromatic light and dark uh, on my particular palette. You can also enlarge this by pulling it to the side and let's take a look now at some of these options that we have on the side here. You'll notice that the harmonies is directly linked to the color wheel or the color set panel. So if I select a color from the color set libraries, for example, you'll notice that the harmony panel changes as well as the color panel. If I pick a color from the color wheel, you'll notice that the harmonies panel also changes. Now, if I find a panel of colors that I really, really like here and I want to keep, what I can do is lock those colors and use those colors in my painting. So as I start working out, one of the things I can do is pick colors from this harmony panel and notice again that when I lock this first one, this is the analogous color harmony, and I pick, for example, the first color here, you can see that it pulls in the complementaries and the monochromatic lights and darks. So in terms of simplicity of painting and working within harmonies, this is ideal because it gives us not only the lightest light and the darkest dark, but it gives us some variance of that color as well within the complementary script and the analogous. Okay, so next, what if we wanted to save these harmonies? So say, for example, I love this particular harmony and I want to continue to work with it. All I have to do is click this Add Swatches to Color Set, and I'll give it a name, and I'm going to call it, well, we'll just keep it Analogous Harmonies 1, and I'll select OK. So now when I expand my Color Set Libraries, you can see that that harmony has been added and it's very convenient because it gives me that opportunity to retain that if I want to use it again if, for example, I've lost or unchecked these particular harmonies. So I know I can get back to this analogous harmony and use it again in future paintings. The next option is called the mixer pad. And when I first started with Corel Painter, I was really excited to see that Painter included a mixer pad or a canvas where I could actually do some mixing of colors that was very reminiscent of what I do with traditional oils or acrylics. So being able to work with a mixer pad and actually mix my own colors was just amazing. You'll notice that there is a sample color option on the little toolbar located on the bottom and again, when I select that, notice how the harmonies, colors, uh, the harmony panel and the color panel also change. So I not only have this wonderful tool here that I can mix my colors, but I can also use harmonies along with it or select a specific color if I'm looking for it. To mix colors or to add colors, just simply select the Apply Color Brush and for example, maybe there's a color on a painting I want to work with. So I'll use my Alt key to sample that color 
and then paint that color on my mixer pad. And then maybe I want to add um, maybe a little white to it to warm it up a bit. So I'll put a little white up here at the top and then I'm going to use my mix color option here and just do a little mixing just to warm that color up a little bit. So now I have a really nice uh, warm value and a cooler value of that color. The mixer pad also has options for sampling multiple colors, for changing the brush size, for dirty brush mode. So if you want to go ahead and paint into a color with dirty brush mode, it's going to pick up that color and notice how you get all those mixing of those colors going together. I love this effect. So you can really get a good color stream going here uh, to work on your paintings. When you have finished mixing and sampling colors, you can clear the mix mixer pad or save it as a mixer pad. So for example, if I wanted to clear this, I would open the options fly out and choose clear mixer pad. And it's going to give me a brand new, beautiful, clean mixer pad to work on. I can also save these mixer colors or I can restore the default mixer. And I'll go ahead and do that so you are aware of what that looks like, uh, especially if you're first opening painter and I don't want you to see anything different than what you should be seeing. So this is the default mixer pad and uh, this is great because you can actually dig right into this and use a lot of these colors and mix a lot of these colors right on the mixer pad. Again, to clear it, you can clear and reset the canvas by selecting this little option called Clear and Reset Canvas. The next option for color is the basic color wheel. You can use the color panel to select a color and view information about that selected color as well. The color panel has two viewing modes, a compact and a full view. In full view, both the color wheel and the sliders are displayed. And in compact view, only the sliders are displayed. So if you are working on a project where you need to know about the colors that you are using, whether they're hue, saturation, or value, or whether you choose to display an RGB, you can get those values right on screen here. So this makes it really handy to be able to work with specific colors that you need when you're working on a project that involves specific either RGB or hue, saturation, and value options. The sliders are also available on this wonderful color panel and you can work with those and work with the saturation and value triangle and notice how it updates again on the harmonies panel, the clone color panel, the hue ring which resides on the far outside of the panel, you have your additional color and your main color and again if you are a painter that needs to have control over a specific color gamut or display in RGB, then this is the panel that you'll want to use. In conjunction with the Harmonies panel, you have two very powerful tools that you can work with in Painter. The next option in Painter is the color set libraries, which are wonderful because the Painter color sets are populated when you open Painter and you have a wide variety of colors that you can pick from from yellow tones to red to blues and more neutral warm values. The options flyout allows you to import color sets, export color sets, remove a color set, and of course you can also change the view of that color set. So if you'd like to see it in list form or you'd like to see the color, color chips larger, select the large option and you have that option. You can also enlarge the panel by sliding it in and out. And so for that reason, you've got a wonderful 
wonderful palette to work with. One of the things I enjoy doing in Painter is using one of my paintings to create color sets from as well. And you'll notice that I have a painting open. And what I'm going to do is go up to the flyout and choose New Color Set from Image. And I can pick the number of colors that I would like to include in this. First of all, I'm going to give it a name. <clears throat> and I'll just call it KB Landscape. And I'll pick up, I think I want to pick up about 50 colors. So I'll select OK. And notice now that those colors are applied to my color set library. And I can work with those. Again, going back and choosing a color, it's reflected on the color panel, color wheel, color panel, color set libraries, and of course the harmonies. The last option that I want to talk about is called the floating color wheel. And initially in Painter, when you open it, you will find that it is pinned to your interface. So it means that you can move it around and place it wherever you would like to on your Canvas interface. Again, it has a wonderful hue ring that you can use. And again, it updates the harmonies and the color panel as you're using it. It also has the saturation and value triangle. And so you can actually swap colors here. And if you're left-handed, you can set it up at left-handed mode. It also has what we call a clone color option. So you can select that. And you'll notice now that it's grayed out. That also is reflected on the color wheel. And it means now that if you're doing photo painting, it's going to be picking up those colors from your photo based upon clone color. So I'll go ahead and uncheck that now. So these are the powerful tools that you'll find in Painter. So whether you're a beginner or an advanced user, professional or hobbyist, you're going to find that these options in Painter should meet your requirements for getting the best of color in your paintings. Have fun and take care.